training the committee on how to read and interpret the scores that we're looking at. I put all of the student data on a profile sheet. It's color coded. It's easy for our committee to look at. It is anonymized. I remove all the students' names, gender, teachers, anything on there that could possibly identify who the student is. The only thing that's on there is their test data, the information that you provide through the referral form that I've shared out um, through the letter inviting you here tonight. I also linked it in the slides, so when you get the slides, if you want to see it, you, you can get to it that way. Um, and any of the work samples, stories, the things that you share with us and the things that the teachers share with us, that is all very important. And we take all of that into consideration because it does factor in the idea of the whole child. So um, when we, that's why I really invited you to come ready to do this because I'm gonna help you. So we do use local norms, as I said to you before. In New Jersey, we can only think about kids in home health. Um, and then quantitative, which is norm reference data. That's, we use an aptitude test here that we issue to all of our students. We also um, use standardized test data when the kids take a standardized test. The kids that are too young for a standardized test, we use the district issued math and reading assessments. Um, and that's already locally norm, so that's, that's a good uh, test for them to take. We also give a creativity test, which measures their divergent thinking before we identify them. And then there's qualitative data, which is criterion reference. So norm reference, just to clarify, is when you're comparing students against other students. Criterion reference, or the qualitative data, is when you're looking at that student against the student himself. So you're comparing that student against himself to see if there's evidence of growth in school, to see if there's evidence maybe of not growth and some stagnation that might be happening there. Uh, there's those parent-teacher scales, which again, that's on that referral form I shared with you. There's anecdotal information in the work samples. So here is the referral form and the link there to access that. I put all this, I'm gonna just show you all the bullets at once. I don't know why I decided to animate this, but okay. It's a training committee that reviews all the student profiles anonymously, which I think I mentioned already. The videos, sometimes parents send in videos. The videos are helpful. We do like them, especially when, earlier I mentioned to you that the, um, the diversity of interests that our students, <laughs> our gifted and talented students tend to see. A lot of them play instruments like piano or harp or violin or something like that. I've had parents send in videos of that. That's very helpful. Obviously, with a student in the, in the video, we're not gonna show that to the committee, so what I do is I play it so they can hear it. I just tell them this is a third grader, and that's that, or whatever the grade level is for that student. Um, other videos are thing. I mean, I've had also parents send in videos of their kids uh, doing something, maybe like a contest of some sort, or doing playing a chess game. But again, if the student's face is in it, I can't show it to the committee. So I transcribe it and describe what happens in the video so that they can understand um, and we just listen to the audio when it's applicable. Context is really most helpful when the committee sees photographs. And that, I cannot stress to you how important that really is. If you are going to refer your child, anytime you attach a photo, please explain what it is. And there are four places where you can put long, uh, there's long text. It doesn't matter where you tell us what it is, just tell us what it is if you're attaching a photo. I've had uh, parents send in on the referral form a photo of uh, a Lego Yoda and nothing else. So I, it's confusing when we see something like that. It's like, well, what is that? Was that something the child thought of by themselves? Did they do that alone? Did they follow an instruction booklet? Did they, I mean, what, you know, there's no context. So the committee doesn't know what to do with that. So again, if you're going to give us those images, it does really help to give us that context. Handwritten artifacts are very powerful. We again, we remove the student names, but remember what I said about that the students have that uh, advanced ability to communicate. 
the um, advanced vocabulary, the clear speech, believe it or not, that does translate to their written uh, communication as well. So we can see that. Support any awards or accolades you mention and anecdotes with PDFs, links, photos, videos, whatever it is. We've had parents that have said, oh, my kid wrote a book, it's available for sale on Amazon and nothing else. So I don't know, just, we can't look for it, we can't see what's in the book, we can't, it, it would really be helpful had that parent um, attached, you know, a link to that maybe, or a, a screenshot of where the, the book is available, or give us something, give us something so that, again, this committee that has the students' names removed can get a better idea of who your child is. Uh, do not attach school issued tests or homework assignments because I can get those from your te good kids' teachers. And then do not ask your child to complete anything extra for the referral process. That again, that's we're, we have that multi tiered system of support, so we want to make sure that we're seeing an authentic picture of your child because each of those tiers serves the children in a different way. We want to make sure we understand your kids so that we can match them to a service that meets their needs the best. I put a little referral tip sheet on there for you too in the slides, so it's real simple. Um, these are the things that we are looking for. Uh, we're gonna, you're gonna describe observable behavior, so things that I can see. Specifically, I'm looking for things that, or the committee is looking for things that speak to the child's social demeanor, what their work ethic looks like. Remember I told you that the difference is, what is this child, is this a child who loves to know things or is this a child who loves to learn things? And it's, it's more about what we can, not that there's anything wrong with either one, but there, it's a different program for those kids depending on who they are. Observable strengths or challenges, okay to attach mistakes. We're not looking for perfection. These are kids. Kids are not perfect. I'm not perfect, believe it or not. It's none of us are, right? So the kids okay, even if you give them talented children, are not perfect. So it's okay. Um, take note of any mannerisms or affective characteristics you've seen. Give specific examples. Tell us a story. Explain why you're including specific work samples. Um, stick with facts. Don't, you know, make sure, again, we're not adding flowery language, we're not adding things like, again, we all love our children. I know we all, we, that there were a handful of us that thought all children are gifted, but you just have to make sure that we, when you are representing your child and you're giving us the picture of who this child is, it's just something that's observable. It's just fact, okay? Explain what has worked in your child's school. In your child's classroom, and how the GNT services can benefit the student. So that that is actually a separate question on the referral form. What do you expect from a gifted and talented program for your child? That's really again that will help us. That will shed some light on it. What is it that you think your child needs? And again, we're naming the service. We're naming a specific need, and then we align a, a service to meet that student's need. Please do not include test scores of any kind. That's not a, that, this is, again, that's the, this is the qualitative portion. Don't discuss information you have not personally witnessed firsthand. Don't write vague, short, or nondescript responses. Think one-liners like, my kid has a high IQ, so therefore I think she's gifted. That's a, that's, the committee doesn't really know what to do with that information other than there's not enough information. Do not include any work samples without explaining why you're attaching them. So hopefully these are some tips that you can take with you as you, as you do kind of look through this referral. And I'm gonna close up with some closing thoughts. Again, so in gifted education, we have an expression, the high tide raises all the ships. And what that means is when you elevate any student at any, if the, even our gifted and talented students, when you're elevating them at any level, you're actually elevating all the students. All the kids can achieve higher and they can actually stretch themselves even more when the programming is exactly right for those kids. Um, so we're gonna focus on student needs. Remember, not all growth is vertical. Be a partner in your child's education. And that's it, thank you so much.
so much.